It's Tuesday, November 19th, and this is now on HNN. Severe weather knocks down trees and gives parts of the state a light show. Okay, the, the branches just broke. The branches just broke too. Plus, across the Pacific, protests continue in Hong Kong. They really fear for their lives. They believe that the police will kill them, that they will shoot them. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give... Key witnesses testify in a third round of public hearings in the Trump impeachment inquiry, and the president is sounding off. And they're using this impeachment hoax for their own political gain. An exclusive look inside the Kauai Community Correctional Center, the needs for upgrades, overcrowding, and the improvements they've made in recent years. I'm Lynn Kawano. I'll have the story coming up. And the list is out. We'll run down the worst toys for the holiday. Hope you weren't planning on gifting an ice cream scented Nickelodeon slime. This is now on h and Here's a live look outside. You can see some clouds, some blue skies trying to pop through. It's clearing up a bit. Yeah, but I'm hearing other parts of the state, it's pouring right now. All of my friends on Kauai are posting on Facebook oh. that it's pouring and lots of rain there and probably some rain expected later as well. We definitely do not need more rain after this weekend. Mm -hmm. There was swift water rescues taking place and it was all in that North Shore area that's just keeps getting pounded and pounded ever since last year. Mm -hmm, yep, and lots of other stuff going across the state. We have power outages, and there were a lot of things happening overnight with this storm system. Our Lacey Denise has a wrap up. Yeah, let's get to that in just a second. Let me pull her up. She just filed this report moments ago of all the new video that we have coming into our newsroom. Here's Lacey with that report. Parts of the state were battered by severe weather overnight, and forecasters say more could be on the way. Viewers sent in video and photos showing lightning crawling through the clouds and lighting up the skies over Oahu. Loud thunder could be heard across the island. Meanwhile, strong winds caused trees to topple over in West Oahu and West Lock Estates and in Central Oahu in Waipio. Tree branches and debris were scattered over a large portion of Waipiouka Street, prompting officials to shut it down for several hours to clear the roadway. The National Weather Service canceled the flood advisory for Oahu this morning, but severe weather could occur once again later today across the state, not just on Oahu. Forecasters say more settled weather is expected tomorrow. Thank you, Lacey, for that report. Whoa, look at another view of outside. We've got wow. Waikiki. No, was there a storm? I know, it looks really here. Yeah. Yeah, but as we mentioned that there may be more of a severe storm uh, coverage happening later this afternoon. Let's send it over to Guy for your forecast. How's it on this Tuesday? I'm Guy Hagi with your HawaiiNewsNow.com forecast. The nasty disturbance will slowly be pulling away later today. But for today, because there's a possibility for more thunderstorms with heavy downpours, the entire state will remain under a flash flood watch, which means flooding conditions are possible. So if you live in a low-lying flood-prone area, uh, be vigilant of the situation. And if the water starts to rise, be prepared to take quick action. For now, you can see there are some scattered thunderstorms still firing up mostly over the ocean, but there's a possibility for more heavy rain today with a thunder and lightning again, and that's going to be the forecast for the entire state. And hopefully by later tonight, that disturbance will be pulling away, leaving behind drier, more settled conditions. Surf has got a little bit of a pulse today up on the north and west shores, but too small to run the Hawaiian Pro. They will try again tomorrow because tomorrow we're expecting a big swell to begin picking up, but it all depends on the timing. If it comes early enough, they they will run the contest, the first jewel of the Triple Crown. So this is what we're looking at for today. Possible thunderstorms, and they won't be widespread, but they'll be spotty in nature. But some spots could get swamped with lots of rainfall. And then fewer showers tomorrow with windward and Malka showers uh, as that disturbance pulls away to the north. And as that disturbance pulls away, look for increasing trade winds. In fact, the weekend looks quite windy. Keep it here on Hawaii News Now. We'll have all your severe weather updates. All right, thank you, Guy. Mm -hmm. Looking pretty promising. Yeah, now to some world news. Um, in China, a small band of anti-government protesters remain holed up at a Hong Kong university as they embrace for the end game of a campus siege. And bringing us this report is Anna Corin. We are here inside the campus of Polytechnic University that has been under siege now for days. You can see some of the remaining protesters walking off there in the distance. We believe that there are 100, maybe 200 protesters who are refusing 
to go. Police are calling on them to surrender, but the protesters that we have spoken to say they will not hand themselves over to police. Now, I want to show you the remnants of what was the place where they were making petrol bombs. Police have described this as a, as a weapons factory, and you can see cans of propane gas, of gasoline, there's cooking oil, sugar, acetate, and obviously glass bottles. And this is what they were hurling at police over the weekend. Now, it all came to a a crescendo very early Monday morning when police tried to, to storm the campus. Uh, that was when protesters just, just, just rained petrol bombs down on the police. Uh, they also set fire to the, the main entrance and uh, since then there has just been this stalemate. Um, I want to take you around the university, show you what remains. When we were here on Sunday it was a hive of activity and now you can see it's just absolutely trashed debris is everywhere and it is an absolute uh, mess now police say that at least 600 people have surrendered 200 of those are minors now they have agreed not to arrest the minors those under the age of 16 they've taken their information and will uh, investigate uh, but uh, police are calling on these protesters to surrender and to surrender uh, peacefully. They say it's up to the protesters to resolve this peacefully. But it's just quite fascinating speaking to these young students and some of them are, are only 15 or, or 16. They really fear for their lives. They believe that the police will kill them, that they will shoot them if they, they leave, that they will assault them. And that is why they are staying. They tell us that they are going to try and escape from the campus. However, we know the police have cordoned off the entire area. There's no way in, no way out. Uh, so for these protesters, it, it's going to be a, a matter of, of whether or not they want to hand themselves in to police or face the consequences. Anna Corrin, CNN, Hong Kong. All right, thanks for that report. More developments there every day. Mm -hmm. Yep, we're joined now by our chief investigative reporter, Lynn Kawano, who is a part of a, of a new series we're working on here at Hawaii News Now. It's an exclusive series, right, Lynn? Mm -hmm. And we're going to be looking at Hawaii's aging uh, prisons and jails. And Lynn, you're on Kauai. Is that where we're starting off? We're starting off at KCCC, yep, where I was there yesterday. We were the only crew allowed. Other crews are going into some of these other jails throughout the week, but yesterday we were the only crew allowed at KCCC. All right. All right, and you filed this report. Let's take you over there. A lack of bed space and the need to upgrade the facilities. It's the common theme. But here in the Garden Isle, the jail isn't as overcrowded as the others, and they have made a lot of upgrades in recent years. Of all the jails, the Kauai Community Correctional Center is the most laid back. There's no guard tower, and it's right up against the busy Kuhio Highway. There are a lot of common areas and open spaces. Even converted FEMA trailers from Hurricane Iniki are permanent cabins for work furlough inmates. KCCC was designed to accommodate 110. Converted space increased the number of beds to 128, but currently there are 172 inmates. That puts this facility at 134% of capacity. To see four men or five men in a two-man cell to see men sleeping on the floor, women sleeping on the floor in a two-person cell, to sit so close to the toilet where another person is defecating because, and your head has no other place to go other than near that area. KCCC has plans for a new building on the property. It will be a Band-Aid fix though, adding only about 30 more beds. The building will go up near the men's farm. It's one of many programs offered to the prisoners. There's a woman's farm too. Both were wiped out last year in historic floods and had to be rebuilt. Other programs available, wood shop. A group of men made this table when a glass door for an office wasn't properly fitted. It's now used in the jail conference room. And when they hit the automated locking system, this is gonna open. Another improvement in the works for KCCC, a new secure and state-of-the-art sally port. Well, this is something that KCCC really needed. 
And if you look over here, this is all anti-climb wire, which is a plus. And no one can get under here. All right, Lynn, thank you for go heading over there and for that report. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's giving us huge insight. It's some place we don't usually get to see. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I was kind of uh, impressed, I will have to say. We believe that this was a, a move by PSA, by the Public Safety Department, to get funding from lawmakers. Mm -hmm. Coming up the session in January, so this is a good time to give the media opportunities if we wanted them. So. Going to KCCC, I went in with this intent saying, you know, it's just all about overcrowding and they need improvements, they need new buildings, they need money. But I was really impressed by that, Joe. It's, as you know, since you're from Kauai, it's right there along mm -hmm. the highway. So they have the minimum security and the work furlough cabins right there. I, these people can walk just about 20 feet oh, and yeah. be The garden, free. the volleyball mm -hmm. courts are all the open. The volleyball courts, yeah. yeah. It's, it's open. They have a big uh, gazebo area where they have cookouts Friday and it's gaining national and international attention there was a crew from Japan there a couple weeks ago because of how they do it of course the maximum security or the more dangerous people are in the back where there is a lot of barbed wire and fencing but to, to give the good prisoners who are on good behavior and the less dangerous ones an opportunity to say we trust you mm -hmm. and we're gonna give you these chances to farm and play volleyball and have barbecues it, it I think it really does make them not want to leave and, and do their time and not really feel like they're caged animals. Mm -hmm. So while they are overcrowded, you saw the cabins there. Those are FEMA cabins from Hurricane yeah. Niki yeah. from 20 years ago that the, the inmates themselves refurbished. They painted, they added the stairs, they did a lot to them, all the improvements themselves. And I think that gives them a sense of pride. They're, they're in there, they're stuck in there yes. for whatever their time is. You might as well make the most of it. And I think KCCC is an example of that, we really don't see that at any of the other mm -hmm. jails. You know, we, we, especially Maui, where our Chelsea Davis is today. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Maui obviously had their issues, the riots in March. Yeah, I have some um, video of that right now yeah, that we pulled and, up for us. And a lot of wow. complaints. Look, look at all of that damage. Right. You know, a, a lot of complaints, overcrowding is an issue, but mm -hmm. it can show you that on Kauai, they have the same overcrowding problem. Uh, but I, I do think that it, it is the way the prison is run and the way the prisoners are treated that really makes a difference. And a lot of these, they're inmates, they're not prisoners. They, you know, they haven't had their trials yet. They're mm -hmm. pre-trial detainees. Mm -hmm. So I think that makes a difference as well. Other than overcrowding, any other challenges Kauai's facing? Every jail has, you know, uh, under funds, right? They're, they're, they don't have the funds they need. So overcrowding, their case triple C is gonna get a new building and that's gonna house 30 inmates. That's still not enough, right? They had 172 when I was there yesterday. Um, so, and they have the bed space capacity of 128. So even adding the 30, you're still over capacity. Um, and I said, why not double decker the jail, like the federal detention center here? No money for that, right. you know? And so that, that really is one of the issues, money, funding, and then flooding where it is, mm -hmm. you know, yes. is, um, is a flood zone. Yes. So these farms get wiped out, the buildings, you can see the water line mm -hmm. on some of these cabins. Mm -hmm. And so you know the water went up there to the stairs where these inmates sleep. So that is a, an issue that I, I don't think they can get away with. But the next building that they build will be higher up to try and ease that burn in a little bit. And then overall, this leads to, trickles down to another big problem is the exporting of our prisoners, which a lot of people complain about separating families, mm -hmm. which lead to non-rehabilitation, -rehabil this place is being Colorado, Arizona, and other places, right? It is such a difficult balance, right? Mm -hmm. so, so the prisons are not overcrowded. The jails are overcrowded. Okay. So the prisons, we're talking about Halava, Saguaro, you know, in Arizona, mm -hmm. those are not overcrowded. They are right about at capacity. And if we had all of those prisoners come home, so, so it's a balance, right? We don't want them away from their families. Obviously, that's such a strain on everybody. But at the same time, if we brought those thousands back home, where are we gonna put them? Mm -hmm. You have nowhere to put them. Mm -hmm. So that, that is a balance that they've been trying. And the lawmakers say it is better to house them on the mainland. We pay somebody else to do it. We don't have to deal with the overcrowding, which eventually leads to unhappy prisoners, which can lead to more riots. Mm -hmm. All right, Lynn, looking forward to that series and continued reports from Maui tonight. All right, another developing story happening right now is in Washington, D.C., we got a live picture of the impeachment hearing. Yep, that's right. Today, the House Intelligent Committee is hearing from two aides who listened into Trump's July call with Ukraine's president. Here's Alice Barr. If you would both please rise. 
adding an oath to tell the truth to one to defend the country. Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman testified today about the July call between President Trump and the leader of Ukraine and what he considered an improper demand to investigate Joe Biden and the Democrats. Frankly, I couldn't believe uh, what I was hearing. Um, it was probably an element of shock that uh, maybe in certain regards my worst fear of how our Ukraine policy could play out uh, was playing out. Colonel Vindman, a national security advisor, was on the call, along with Jennifer Williams, a top State Department advisor to Vice President Mike Pence, who also found it unusual and inappropriate. It involved discussion of what appeared to be a domestic political matter. Their testimony coming as President Trump dismissed the hearing as a kangaroo court. What's going on is a disgrace, and it's an embarrassment to our nation. The president has previously labeled both witnesses never Trumpers without evidence. Ms. Williams, are you engaged in a presidential attack? No, sir. Colonel Vindman, would you call yourself a never Trumper? Representative, I'd call myself never partisan. House Republicans sought to discredit Colonel Vindman, casting doubt on his judgment and trustworthiness. Colonel, you never leaked information? I never did, never would. That is, uh, that is preposterous that I would do that. Republicans also pushed Colonel Vindman to identify an intelligence official he spoke to about the July call. Democrats accusing them of trying once again to unveil the whistleblower who started this investigation. In a week full of testimony, all eyes are really looking ahead to tomorrow when Ambassador to the European Union Gordon Sondland is set to testify. The one-time Trump donor changed his original closed-door deposition to say there was a quid pro quo in Ukraine. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. All right, the developments there. Um, new, also, new developments in that story every day. We're going to keep you up to date with the test. Testimony happening there every day is mm -hmm. when it's happening. Yeah. But we're going to switch gears a little bit here. We're going to talk toys, but still in line with politics, yes. right? I think this is really silly. I've never put these two things together. So the Mattel card game Uno. Familiar oh, yeah. Uno! Uno! I know. Apparently, they've redone the deck uh, to keep Thanksgiving dinner politics free. Boys. I didn't even know Uno was associated with politics. But apparently... Or Thanksgiving. But, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Apparently, the new deck of UNO cards does not have red or blue cards, which are the colors of the Republican and Democratic parties, oh. respectively. Instead, those colors have been replaced with orange and purple. I have a problem with this. There's other parties. Look at all that green. <laughs> They're keeping the green cards. There's politics still there. It's so silly. But I guess, you know, the, uh, the new deck also has a new veto card that <gasps> reads, actually, it says no politics. Which oh, they're then just makes stirring the pot. They're stirring the pot. Oh, they're stirring it's the really pot. It's really silly. Anyway, if you want to buy this nonpartisan deck of cards, it'll cost you five ninety nine. Five ninety nine. Okay, good deal. <laughs> All right, we're gonna talk. There's a list out today. Yes. The worst toys you can get for the holiday for kids. Yes. And you'll want to listen up because there's some really funny ones on here, right? That's right. Consumer Safety Group World Against Toys Causing Harm says the Nerf Ultra Gun 1, it fires soft darts up to 120 feet, but it shoots with enough force to cause eye injuries. And then you have Nickelodeon's Frozen Treat Slime, which is pretty, pretty much like slime. Yeah. Mm, I heard and it's ice cream flavor. Yeah, and Yum. they made it into ice cream flavors like mint chocolate chip and berry smoothie, even though they're made out of harmful chemicals and uh, should not be eaten. Oh, which could be really great. confusing for kids. I feel like the dangerous toy issue has been around for a long time. Oh. It's not just slime. I have my favorite, and this was it. When I was a kid, I remember getting gifted the Teenage Ninja, oh, Ninja I remember that Turtles one. Pizza Thrower. This thing was awesome because we would play tag with it. Literally, like, just take it off its little wheelie base there, and then it was just like our own pizza gun, and we'd just have forts built and just dodge the pizzas. It actually hit with some power, too. Well, those little pizzas are like pl hard plastic, right? Yeah, they're like pucks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was so fun. <laughs> yeah, well, my, I remember my dangerous toy. This, I don't remember if you guys remember this. This is the Fly Dancer doll. Ooh, so cute. you pull that, like, a uh, seahorse thing on the back of her, and her wings stand up horizontal, and she spins full force. How many eyes were lost That'll from take Little your Sky? Eye out. <laughs> exactly. You'll shoot your eye out. You'll shoot your eye out. Anyway, you can find that list online. All right. Cool. Let's switch gears one more time. Let's go Ooh. to the coolest car of the year, yeah. man. If you're looking for something to buy for those adults you love, the 2020 Corvette has been named the Motor Trend Car of the Year, and it's not even in full production yet. What makes this car so special is that its engine is behind the seat, so basically in the center of the car, Ooh. like most high-cost exotic 
models, but the new Corvette is in high cost. It's only around $60,000, mm, which nice. isn't too bad if you compare it to the high cost exotic models, which are like $200,000. Um, and production is expected early next year because of the United Autos worker strike. Cool that the Corvette's making a comeback mm -hmm. just in time for you to get me a $60,000 Christmas <laughs> present. Thank you, Ashley. You're welcome. Uh, you know, <laughs> wait till you see what I get you. A beautiful day outside is oh, what you're getting. Well, for yes. now, yes. stay safe and dry out there, yeah. everyone. Hope it stays clear. See you back here at 5 o'clock on Hawaii News Now.